Surprise everybody, it's broken. What we have here is a Troy built. Troy built lawnmower, looks like an MTD. Not much happens. You pull this thing to your blue in the face. Nobody's home. I feel like we've seen a mower like this before. I don't know, I don't know, was it exactly the same? I don't know. It doesn't run, so we gotta fix it. So what could possibly be wrong with it? Well, we have a couple possibilities. It doesn't feel like it lacks compression, just by my seat of the pants pull the cord assessment. We don't know if it has spark. We don't know if it has fuel. So. Let's see if we're getting spark. Let's spray some good old liquid fire into the carburetor and see what we get. If we get a moment to fire, we know we have spark and we have sufficient compression. And our problem is fuel. Okay, I think we have our answer. I mean, I guess I should check the obvious. Is there gas in it? Yeah, there is gas. So that tells us we have a fuel delivery issue or a fuel air mixture issue, more likely the latter than the former. So what can we do? Our problem is likely going to be carburetor related because that seems to be where all the problems are with these things. Let's get this bad boy up on the bench, tear into it. Okay, we got three screws that hold this air box on. You got an eight millimeter up here. Make sure you throw the screw across the, uh, across the room. And you got a couple sevens. You got a seven here and a seven here. Let's get a little tray to put this stuff in so we don't lose it. magnetic parts holder to the rescue. So now we'll get a clamp. We'll clamp off that fuel line so we don't have a the Exxon Valdez. I like to use hemostats. If I can find them. There we go. You can also use a locking needle nose plier. Some people use those. Years ago, a member of my family was having a lot of surgery, so I always used to Ask the surgeon or the medical professionals if they had any leftovers that they wouldn't mind donating to a cause. And most were pretty, oh, there's another one over here. My bad, another eight. Most were more than willing to give away used medical supplies. I know it sounds kind of gross, but they're super handy. All right, so we have one of these uh, crappy, cheap plastic carburetors here. And what happens with these is there's a jet. The bottom likes to get clogged up with stuff. So let me get you guys resituated so you can get a better view. So there's a better view of the carburetor, which is right here. It just slides out, but you kind of have to disconnect the fuel line and a couple other things all at the same time. Let's disconnect the clamp that holds the line on. Then we can slide the line off carefully. Remember this is all plastic, so you don't want to break anything. Maybe have a little something ready to go because there is fuel there. The bottom of a five gallon bucket cut off seems to work pretty well. Disconnect our, I think that's our, is our governor or is our choke? There we go. And these things are kind of a pain in the neck. There we go. 
think we're still leaking a little bit. Let's switch over to locking needle nose. Maybe that hemostat's not strong enough. Should probably just drain this tank. Now you might be able to get away with not taking the entire carburetor off because you can take the bowl off. There's a screw here and a screw over here. You can get a wrench on. You might be able to clean the jet that way. I don't have much luck doing that though because it's kind of a pain in the neck to work on. As you can see, getting this thing apart is really not all that difficult. So this is the method I prefer. Let's drain the remaining fuel out. See what it looks like. It doesn't smell too horrible. Okay, let's use a couple of sixes to take off these two screws. Six millimeter socket. Now this thing can be tricky to get the bolt, the, the bowl off the bottom. You kind of have to pry, but gently. Remember this thing is cheap, crappy plastic, so if you pry too hard or unevenly, you break it. Take a bigger screwdriver, this one's too small. myself. And if you guys can see that, let's get you zoomed in a little bit. That is the jet right there. So that can become clogged. It looks clogged. I don't, I can't, I know, it's hard to tell. But anyway, so what I usually do is I'll just dunk this whole thing in the ultrasonic cleaner for a little bit. Normally it cleans it right up. Got some warm water in the ultrasonic cleaner. Add a little bit of simple green to it. Doesn't take much. I am just gonna pre-clean carburetor a little bit in some carb cleaner. That's good enough. What causes this problem, most of the time, is just not putting stabilizer in your gas. If you guys put stable or its equivalent in your fuel, these issues wouldn't happen. Or just make sure you use fresh fuel every time. Here goes nothing. Give that about half an hour, 40 minutes. Cool. I'm telling you, an ultrasonic cleaner is one of the best, best hundred dollars I ever spent on tools. I like to move parts around the ultrasonic cleaner while they're, get, while they're being cleaned too. You can see right there all the crap coming out of that jet. Almost looks like a milkshake. Now you can also remove the float, the needle and seat on this one, but I don't normally see issues 
uh, with the needle and seat on this particular carb. Nine times out of ten, it's just that jet on the bottom that's clogged. Now you can just try to clean that with like a piece of wire or something, uh, even perhaps without removing the carburetor, but again, I, I think you get a much better clean this way. We're, uh, we're about five minutes in. You see there's still a lot of crap coming off of it. Got all the parts out of the ultrasonic cleaner, nice and spick and span. Now it's time to reassemble everything. So I like to use a little bit of two-stroke oil on these O-rings to lube them up a little bit, just so everything goes together. You can use anything. I, I have some Echo Power Blend that came with one of my one of my pieces of Echo machinery, and they give you those oil samplers. So just coat the O-ring liberally. Wipe off your finger. Make sure you get the bolt holes lined up before you press the bolt firmly down because they're going to be tough to remove later on. And get the screws. And snug those down. For when I said an 8 millimeter, it's actually a 5 sixteenths. I had the socket in the wrong spot. Go figure, right? What happens when you acquire sockets over the years and people borrow them, they move them, and everything gets out of order and out of sorts. So I used to have all Craftsman sockets, but that socket got lost, so now I have a 5 16 that's a different color, different shape. It is what it is. Now you may have noticed I replaced the fuel line. I did. Not because it definitely needed to be replaced, but you know, this thing's probably, I don't know, five, six, seven years old. Fuel line doesn't last forever. It's cheap, I have it in stock, so why not? Let's get our fuel line on. Get the clamp on. Actually, I probably should have done The linkages first because they're a bit of a pain in the neck. There we go. So you got this one here. Yeah. This one that goes in there. Go. Now we can put the fuel line on. Carburetor can be a bit of a pain in the neck to get back sometimes. But I think we got it. Let's put our fuel line clamp back on. Now this part can be a little tricky because there's this breather hose that comes from the crankcase. You want to get onto this nipple. 
in the air box. So just make sure you do that. Once you get your air box on, simply put the screws back in. It's pretty easy. Two smaller screws go in the center, larger screws go on the outside. I'm not going to use the impact driver here. This is plastic we're dealing with, don't want to strip anything. These are metal threads, but even still. I think this whole mower was probably like 150 bucks, so it's not going to be definition of quality. There we go. Let's get her back on the ground, put some gas in there and see what happens. Got some fresh stabilized gas. Ooh, that tank is gross. I think we're gonna blow that tank up. There's a lot of nastiness in there. Quick demonstration of how I typically clean fuel tanks. Much better. Compressed air works remarkably well. Just make sure there's not a lot of fuel on the bottom. I'm gonna throw some stabilized fuel in here, like I said before. I'm also gonna throw some concentrated stabilizer in here, because I don't know when this thing will be used next. There we go. It's almost a full tank. We'll dump a little bit of this good stuff in there. Leave a link in the description. You can pick it up online. You can pick it up at a home improvement store. I'm just going to put a tiny bit in there. Because again, that gas is already stabilized. All right. Let's see what happens, right? You guys think it's gonna run? Let's see. I already checked, made sure it had oil. Hard to argue with that. Let's put the air cleaner back on. This way you guys don't have to worry about me getting asphyxi asphyxiated. I think that's a wrap guys so if you have a troy built tb 110 also looks like an mtd uh let's see model number 11a a2 bm 711 or just a mower that looks like this with an engine that looks like this pretty easy problem to solve zero dollars in parts just a little bit of time but again this problem is a problem that can be prevented using proper maintenance using fuel stabilizer so just use fuel stabilizer or just always use fresh gas. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.